Alright then, so on the guides page at the minute, we fetched all the guides and we list them here and each one of these titles is an anchor tag. Now at the minute when we click on that, they all just go to the homepage, just forward slash. But what I'd like to do is direct the user to a details page for that particular guide or blog post. So if I clicked on this one, it would incorporate the ID of this one into the URL up here. So it would be to something like forward slash guides forward slash one, which is the ID of this one. If I clicked on this over here, it would be forward slash guides forward slash four or five, maybe whatever the ID is of the particular guide or blog post, right? So how do we make a single page for all of these different IDs, if you like, for all of these different links? If we think about it, the paths all have the same general structure and only the ID changes, right? They're all forward slash guides, forward slash some ID, where the ID could be anything. And we want to show the same components for each ID, only the data we inject into that component, like the title and the body, would change and be different for each ID. But how do we name a file to match all of those different paths with different IDs? We can't just name it id.svelte, because that's then going to match the literal path, forward slash guides, forward slash ID, right? Instead, what we do is we wrap our file name in square brackets. And this tells Svelte that this ID part of the URL is changeable. And it will show this component for any path that matches this general kind of structure, forward slash guides, and then forward slash some kind of ID, like 50, or it could be XYZ. Now, it doesn't have to be called ID, by the way. You can call it slug or something else entirely. It really doesn't matter. The name is up to us. But the general term for a changeable part of the route like this is called a route parameter. So now this component is going to load up in the browser for any route that matches forward slash guides and then forward slash some kind of ID. So let's add a bit of content to this so we can test it out. So what I'm going to do is a div with a class of guide like so. And then inside here, we're going to have an H2 for the guide title. We'll just say title for now, but later on, it will be the actual guide title. And then down here, we'll have a paragraph tag for the guide body. Again, we'll output the actual data later on. Now down at the bottom, I want a style tag and I want to place in this class right here guide that says margin top 40 pixels, padding 10 pixels and a border kind of like a light gray color as well. All right. So now this component is going to load up for any of the different articles that we go to, right? Or different guides that we go to. Now, what I want to do is quickly go to the index components where all the guides are listed. And I want to output the actual ID inside the href. So it would be to forward slash guides forward slash the ID, right? Of that particular guide. Now, the way we do this is by outputting a dynamic value. So curly braces. And then we're going to use a string template. Now it's going to go to forward slash guides and then forward slash. And then to output a variable inside a string template inside backticks, we do dollar sign and curly braces. And we can say guide dot ID. So we're using this guide and the ID property on it. All right. And so now if the ID is one, it's going to be forward slash guides forward slash one. So let's give this a whirl now in the browser. So now I'm going to refresh just for good measure to catch any changes. And if we hover over this, you'll be able to see in the bottom left the URL that this is going to. And it's incorporating the ID of each of these different items. So if I click on this one now, then we see this component and we see the URL is forward slash guides forward slash one. So we're loading up this component for that particular path. If we click another, it's going to load up exactly the same component for forward slash 10 this time. And all of these would do the same. Now, this is all working, but what I'd actually like to do is load in the data for this particular guide or blog with the ID of 17 and inject it into this component. And to do that, again, we're going to use that load function. So inside this component, we need our two script tags again. So let's do the top one, first of all, which is where we have the load function. And remember that has a context attribute equal to module. And then we need our other script tag down below, which is going to accept in the prop. Now, because I'm feeling super lazy, I'm just going to go to the index component where we already have this load function. And I'm going to grab all of that and copy it. And I'm going to paste it over here in the top and we just need to make a couple of edits. So the first edit that we need is to the endpoint itself, because this is to fetch all of the posts. But we want to fetch just a single post with that particular ID. 
But how do we know what that ID is inside this function? Because we don't know which link a user has clicked on. It could be 15, 17, 20, 1, etc. Well, we also get up here on the context object something called the page object. And on that is a params property. And that will include any parameters, any route parameters. So for instance, I could come down here and say const ID is equal to page dot params and then whatever the parameter that we want is called. Now we call the ID over here in the file name. So whatever you called it over here, it will be that property. So dot ID. If we call this abc.svel in square brackets, this would be abc, all right? So we're now fetching or grabbing the ID parameter from the route. So we have that and then we can just tack it on at the end over here. Now to do that, I'm gonna change this into a template string using backticks. So again, we can output a variable using dollar sign and curly braces, and that is just ID, this thing right here. So now we're fetching that single post, right? Now, instead of this being called guides, it should just be called guide, and then the props down here, this should be called guide as well, singular, and then down here we'll say, could not fetch the guide. All right then. So now we're fetching that single guide. We need to expose it or accept it as a prop. So it's exposed to the template. So we'll say export let guide, whatever you call the prop up here, this is called. And then down here in the template, we can use it. So I can say guide.title right here. And then down here, I can output the guide body. Let's get rid of this junk. So curly braces, guide.body, like so. And that, my friends, should be pretty much it. All right then, so now if we click on one of these, we should see all of the content for that particular item because we went out and fetched it. Awesome. And this works as well. And this works as well, cool. All right, so that, my friends, is how we use route parameters. Remember, when you're using a route parameter for a page component, you wrap the name of the page component file in square brackets.